screaming mummy. Discovered in 1886, a mummy with an agonized expression on his face, has long since been the object of speculation. This mummy has all his organs intact, which is not customary with mummification. Many interesting theories have arisen, though none have been proven right or wrong. Bob Breyer, a University of Long Island archaeologist, speculated that two parties were responsible for the mummy's agonized expression. One was the murderer, while the other ensured full preservation of the body. Other researchers and archaeologists have come up with theories ranging from cold-blooded murder to poisoning to being buried alive. A 2008 National Geographic documentary special investigated the possibility that the mummy could be Prince Pentier, who was suspected of planning his father's murder. Ancient documents from the 12th century claimed one of Pharaoh Ramses III's wives was tried for conspiring to kill him, due to her desire for Pentier to take over the throne. It is thought that when this plan was discovered, she poisoned Pentier as punishment, and rolled him up in sheepskin after being mummified. If that was the case, the scream could have been due to the pain from the poison ingested. However, only a CT scan had been done of the screaming mummy, and it remains pure speculation whether the mummy was in fact Prince Bentier. Less sensational theories suggest that, the mummy's jaw is open simply because his head most likely rolled back after death occurred. But even that bit of realism is as good a guess as anybody else's. Panxian Caves the Panxi and Dedong caves are known to have housed humans 300,000 years ago. It is also known that, large animals inhabited the vicinity of the caves as well. Scientists, however, were extremely surprised to find prehistoric deposits indicating massive stegodons, and rhinoceros also lived, or at least died, inside the caves. They found this very strange seeing as how the caves are 1,600 meters above sea level. Paleoanthropologist, Lynn Saparts stated how rare it is to find animals in a cave, that don't typically live in them. She believed that, stegodons and rhinos were very unlikely to simply wander into the cave. Rhinos, in particular, are solitary animals that, graze on their own. And yet, here lie their remains. One theory involves carnivorous animals killing the mammals, and dragging them into the cave. The most likely answer, though, would be human intervention. Inspection of the bones showed that, they were burnt and then pounded by what could only have been a tool made out of stone. The last expedition to the cave took place in 1998. To date, no further progress has been made in determining just exactly how those large animals got into the cave at all. ever-burning lamps. Lamps that kept on burning without using any fuel were discovered all over the world during the Middle Ages. These lamps were sealed into tombs, supposedly to ensure the deceased had light to guide them on their way to the afterlife. Some of these tombs were opened years later, and the lamps were still burning. Superstitious types became terrified of this phenomenon, destroying any ever-burning lamp they came across. People accused pagan priests of trickery. Others simply refused to believe that, a lamp could burn for an indefinite period of time. The vast majority claimed that the devil was to blame. Speculation was also rife that Hebrew communities had discovered, and preserved what today is known as electricity. According to the legend, a French rabbi named Jechel possessed a lamp that could light up by itself, with no fuel or wick. Jechel, according to this tale, invented a special button that would discharge an electric current to his metal door knocker. If someone touched the door knocker at the same time, the rabbi touched the nail, the person would receive a shock, and double over. Even with electricity being a common thing nowadays, all who have tried to replicate the ever-burning lamps have failed. Therefore the question remains, how were these lamps able to keep burning, for hundreds of years without fuel? Salzburg Cube. In 1885, Radl, an employee at an Austrian foundry, discovered the mysterious Salzburg Cube. 
he cracked open a seam of coal to find a strange-looking iron cube inside it. It had many cracks and little holes in it, as well as a strange color, and a deep fissure down the middle. Radel had never seen anything like it before, so after showing it to his boss, they turned it over to the Hymatos Museum. The next year, a professor at the museum named Adolf Gerlt, studied the cube and determined it to be part of a meteorite. But further studies by the Natural History Museum in Vienna proved that, it was not in fact a meteorite, but artificially manufactured from an unknown source. It is thought that the coal that, produced the Salzburg cube was at least 60 million years old. Adding to the mystery of the cube is how some people actually believe it to have vanished. The reasons for this range from it being part of a shadowy conspiracy to it simply being debunked, as a worthless piece of rock, and tossed away as such. This, of course ignores the fact that, the cube does in fact exist, and can be found safely on display at its usual home, the Hymatos Museum in Vienna. Lady of the Spiked Throne The Lady of the Spiked Throne is the fitting name given to a mysterious and unique artifact dating back to 2700 BC. The artifact remains one of the strangest ancient objects ever found, after ensuring that it was not a fake. Italian archaeologist Massimo Vidal and his team noted the lady's unique look for posterity. The object is shaped like a large vehicle, most likely a chariot or a boat ending at the front, with the figurine of a large bull's head. Inside the vehicle are 15 figures forming what can be described as a procession. There are traces of yellow, red, and black on these figures. Some of the male figurines share the same adornments around the neck, and on their head. Conical gowns are worn, that have not been observed in other similar figurines. You can also see a female figurine can be seen seated on a throne of spikes. Therefore the name Lady of the Spiked Throne. Vidal's studies concluded the lady was created by the ancient Indus civilization, but its meaning and purpose is a mystery. No evidence suggests Indus used any four-wheel vehicles, and it is unknown whether the artifact was made for ritual use, or another, more practical reason.